Today's Wednesday, January 18th, 2023, and I'm going to continue reading from Ecclesiastes, and first I'll summarize or point out the, the things that stuck out to me from chapter 4 before I read from chapter 5. And so from chapter 4, the what stuck out to me was when, when the author mentions no comforter. And to me, that immediately makes me think of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. So it's just one of those instances where the Bible has a lot of instances where people, people are talking about future events or they're talking about things that they don't necessarily know about, but in an inspired way. And so th this could be one of those instances. I don't know. I don't know the first instance in the Bible where the Holy Ghost is referred to as the comforter. But there all are a lot of connections in the Bible where somebody doesn't even really know what they're talking about specifically, but they're alluding to something more meaningful than they might originally think when writing it. I'm not sure if this is an instance of that. I, again, I don't know the first time that the Holy Ghost is said to be the comforter. But that's what I read in, in chapter 4 when when the author is mentioning that there's no comforter. It's like the they didn't have the Holy Spirit to comfort them. And so continuing on in that chapter, there's talk of power and oppressors, and we still have this power play dynamic here on earth. The people, people who have the power oppress the people that are underneath them. We're still, we still see that today. And I think that we know deep down that that's not right. I've always felt like everybody who's here, born on earth, should be on a level playing field. I've I've never felt like anybody here is on a higher level than anybody else. And that's obviously not how the world works here. There it's all about power play, who who has the upper hand, people always trying to get the upper hand with whatever earthly power they have. But deep down inside, I've always known that nobody here has authority over another human being in that way. Like, I'm I'm better than you. I, I can tell you what to do. Or I know I know better than you know, so you have to submit to me. I've just always known that we as individuals are all on the same level. And I think that that's how it's going to be in heaven. I think that that's... That's what's meant by the least in heaven is greater than the greatest person here on earth. So, uh, one, some other things. Oh, okay. In chapter four, um, it's talked about folding your hands together and eating your own flesh. I wonder if that's where they get the idea for Ouroboros and since that was being talked about in the section where it's talking about work. I'm I'm guessing that's talking about the type of people who don't don't lift a finger themselves to do anything and they're just like these ravenous creatures. They they won't do anything themselves and they have their hands folded and they're just gnawing at themselves. Uh I don't know, some interesting imagery, but it's talking about a certain type of people. And then and then he goes on to talk about one if you have one handful and quietness about you that's better than having two hands full but being all err and full of travail and all the it, you shouldn't work yourself to death just to have two hands full you should be satisfied with one handful and a quiet satis satisfaction with life and i think that's obvious i think we all know those people where they they could have retired 20 years ago, but you watch them walk around their house and they're still saving. They'll like reuse every trash bag and they pinching pennies left and right and always working. You know, like I said, people who could have retired 20 years ago, but they're still constantly working and you already have one handful. What, what are you doing? So that's, clearly not the best way. And then another part of chapter four is that it's better to not be alone. 
it kind of sucks because I think it is a big part of today that we do all feel like we're all doing this by ourselves and it's not common these days for people to have big support groups for people to have a big community and so I think a lot of us struggle with being alone and more not cheerfulness from Ecclesiastes chapter 4 I mean it shouldn't be surprising at this point that a lot of the theme of Ecclesiastes is that everything here is vanity and life more or less you're not gonna get satisfaction out of building something big or doing anything great lower your expectations and just try to live in the moment and enjoy yourself has been the overall theme but chapter four takes it kind of to the next level it's better to be dead than to be here and i have to agree with that and i i feel like that's almost one of those philosophical truths that most philosophers come to the conclusion of along the lines of if you want to seek truth you have to forget everything that you ever knew that seems to be one of those philosophical truths that most philosophers come to yeah you're not gonna just be handed truth here you need to clean slate start from the ground up if you're gonna find truth here and another one seems to be that life ultimately sucks here and is painful and it's better to just be dead not in a supporting suicide way whatsoever notice that in the bible like job comes to similar conclusions <clears throat> and, and it never takes a suicidal turn to it i don't support suicide or anything like that but life is a struggle and it is people who have already suffered through life and and they already finished all of it they are better off because we have a lot of suffering to go through so i just think it's a, a fact of life it, it is better to be dead and to have already gone through this than to be present or to still still be born and he gives the reason it's because of all the evil work yeah this place is full of evil work that is the reason that it sucks to live here Part of it does go to the power play, the power and the oppression thing. Most people are not in a good position here on earth. You're born into a bad situation where your life is going to not be that comfortable and where there's going to be a lot of evil people lording over you today. Back in the day, there were chances that you were born to a cool kingdom. <clears throat> today, with the NWO, there's no chance. You're you're screwed no matter what. And being in, in America, being in USA is actually... This whole recent PSYOP thing really should be showing people, no matter how bad you think it, it is in USA, if you've been paying attention to other places, in Europe and places, I, I know that they still make people wear masks on public transit and stuff like that. And it's just... You can almost see that the more the more dictatorship like a country was, the more crazy they were with all those lockdowns and things. So anyways, it's clear that everywhere on earth these days, people with power are evil and there aren't any righteous kingdoms anymore on earth. And I guess it's fitting that before the end when the one true righteous kingdom comes down. It's just total mayhem on earth and reminds me of in Sodom how many people, uh, how many righteous people there were before God destroyed the city. There really weren't that many. Okay, uh, better to be, better to not be alone. Already talked about that. Good life. Just some more wisdom. It's better to have a good life as a poor person than to have a dumb, meaning, meaningless life as a king. Move, I feel like movies like Aladdin are kind of about this idea. Just the idea of their, the ability of there to be all this excitement and greatness in just some poor person and how... You know, even a rich person can be bored of their life. And uh, there's all sorts of tales. Well, that probably goes back to Prince and the Pauper. Um, 
it is, yeah, it is a truth that your life, your life is what you make of it. And everybody's just born into a certain situation and it's up to you to make, make of your life as you will. <clears throat> okay. So that's it for Ecclesiastes chapter four. Um, let's read chapter five and that'll be it for, for this day. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven, and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. <clears throat> For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldst vow not vow, than that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error, Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice, and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. If thou seest the oppression of the poor, and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all, the king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go, and what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely for one to eat and to drink, and to enjoy the good of all his labor, that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. Hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.